Welcome to another episode of Small Girl Big Talk. If you are new to this podcast, welcome. My name is Wendy and I'm your host in this podcast where we discuss all the big stuff in adulthood like self-identity, mental health, relationships, money, health and all the other important things that you care about. So right now, as we approach the end of the year, we are on the topic of finishing the year strong. So for me personally, I like to take quarter four of the year, like in the month of October, November, December, to take a step back to review how have I done in the past year and to really set the foundation strong to prepare myself to achieve the goal for me in the upcoming year. Previously in episode 19, I've talked about setting the right intentions to make 2024 your best year yet. And last week we were talking about how you can deal with imposter syndrome as you really approach this personal growth journey. And today I want to talk about building habits, specifically good habits that are going to help you to establish the systems and the personality and the identity of the person of who you want to be. A big reference that I'll be using for this episode is the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. Personally, I read this book back in 2021 and it has been a huge inspiration for a lot of habits that I was able to establish in the past two years. And I want to share with you what I have learned. I wouldn't say it's a summary of this book, but specifically, it's more like some of the points that I've taken away from the book and really practice and apply to my lifestyle. And that has helped me to build good habits in the past two years. So just a few examples for you to know. I have been meditating every morning for a year and a half already. And around the same period of time, I've also established a habit to go to the gym or work out or sometimes just do yoga, at least stay active for like three times a week. And on top of that, I've been able to regularly sleep around seven hours plus on average. And I was able to also build the habit that allowed me to show up weekly right here on this podcast and to also improve my work and also my content creator journey as well. Um, So there have been some success stories over here and I want to share with you what I have learned and what I have done that has helped me to get there in hopes that, you know, I get to inspire you to really establish good habits that can help you to achieve your goals. The reason that I've chosen to talk about habits building instead of goal setting, it's because over the years, I've also learned that you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. And by that, what it means is you can set big hairy audacious goals like achieving financial freedom or getting 15% of body fat percentage or stop vaping or read 20 books a year. You can set such big goals. But what is going to actually help you to achieve it is to build the habits and lifestyle of a person who is able to help you to become that person to achieve that goal. So I'm just going to give you an example. Say your goal is to actually achieve 15% body fat percentage, okay? What you need to do to get to there is to actually do the right amount of strength training and cardio to increase your metabolic rate. Or maybe if you are someone who has a bad habit of binge eating when you're stressed or to eat supper at 1 a.m. every single night, these are some habits that you have to remove in order to become the person that can achieve 15% body fat percentage. So no matter what you are doing, you can have Goals. Goals are really important because even if you're driving, you need to know the destination that you're going. So yes, you need to know where you're going. You need to set goals. But what is actually going to help you to achieve these goals? It's to really set the right habits that are going to help you to actually get to the destination. And so today, how I'm going to approach this podcast is to share with you what I've done in the last 24 months 
to really build healthy habits and specifically how I'm going to approach it is I will split it into kind of two halves. So I will start with building good habits first um, and then I will get into removing bad habits. All right, so let's just get right into it. So in building good habits, the core principle that I really got out of the book Atomic Habits is to really make it easy. So if you want to build a habit, you want to make this habit as easy as possible so that there is as less resistance as possible to help you to actually practice this habit. So I'm going to take my habit of being able to meditate every morning as an example. A lot of people has been talking about the benefits of meditation, but to really turn it into practice, to really do it every single day, it takes discipline for you to get used to it. Because number one, meditation, it's not easy. Sitting there and be quiet with your mind, even though it sounds so easy, it is actually really hard because a lot of people get bored very easily. And it takes time and discipline to really get used to this practice and to get better at it. So one thing that I have learned to make it easy for me to meditate every morning is actually habit stacking. So what habit stacking mean is you build a habit based on something that you are already doing. So for example, you do something immediately after dinner or immediately after wake up. And so for me personally, I have already have the habit that immediately after I wake up in the morning, I drink a glass of water. Okay, so this is something that I want to show you that it's already established. And what I did is that I stacked another habit on top of this habit of drinking water. And it's that every day morning after I wake up, after I drink a glass of water, I go to meditate. So that's what I do. So my routine right now is I open my eyes, I go to the bathroom to pee. I, sometimes I don't even brush my teeth. And then I head to my living room, I drink a glass of water, and then the next thing immediately, I just get cozy on my couch and start meditating. On some special days when I feel like it, I might like an instance before I start meditating, but this has pretty much been my routine in the past one and a half years since April 2022. One of the laws that's stated in this book, besides making it easy, is to also make it attractive or make it satisfying. And the thing about meditation is because after practicing it for an amount of time, I also find that it is something that has helped me to really understand myself better, to really align myself with my vision every single day, to really help me to draw me back to my core of why am I living? What do I want out of this life? And because there is a very satisfying feeling of it, like I feel good after I meditate, it has become something that I look forward to because it's a habit that I know, even though at the moment of doing it, it might there might be some resistance and I might not be the most comfortable, but after doing it, I feel really good. So it has become something that I was able to keep on doing every single morning. Now, another habit that I've built is to actually work out three times a week. And what I have learned to make it easy for me to go to the gym is that at the early stage, the habit that you want to focus on is not working out three times a week, but it's actually to build the habit to go to the gym, to actually start working out. So at the early stage of it, my goal is to just make it a habit to go to the gym. And I started off with just going to the gym 15 minutes a day, even though it was pretty short and I would be very tempted to stay for a long time, I know that if I overwork out at the early stage and my body is like super sore, I'm going to have more resistance to go back to the gym. Because at that moment, my brain would start registering that going to the gym equals the pain and it's very easy for you to just give up very quickly. So what you want to do is to start small, to make it a habit first to just go to the gym and slowly build yourself up to work out even more to achieve the fitness goal that you have. The resistance for me to go to gym is also that workout takes up a lot of time and also the fact that 
I don't know what to do in the gym. Like I hate that feeling of just sitting in the gym and be like, oh, what am I working on today? Or is this how I do a bicep curl? Or maybe I should do my backs. Like I don't like to spend so much time to think about it. So what I have done to help me to fight this resistance to make it easy is number one, I decided that for me, it is enough to just work out in my condominium's gym. So I don't need to drive to a destination. And on days that my body needs something more gentle, I would just do yoga in my house. I don't even need to walk out of my house and go to another level in my building. Another thing that I've said is to allow myself to just work out 30 minutes a day and it is enough for me. Now, the next struggle is then, what do I do in the gym? Because we always spend a lot of time thinking of what to do in the gym. So to make it easier for myself, I have found a YouTube channel that has 30 minutes video, including the warm-up, including the number of sets and rest with a timer to really just stick to it. And it even has cool down that I can follow to complete my entire workout in just 30 minutes. So All I literally need to do is to wake up, put on my sports clothes, go down to the gym and then put on my phone tripod and play a video and I can start working out. Like I don't need to think or plan my workout sets, my workout routine. I just need to do it. And same thing goes to yoga. I already have a Notion page where I listed down all of my favorite yoga videos that I found online and I even remarked there like, if this is a slow flow that is good for days where my body is really sore, or if this is a little bit more challenging, if I'm looking for kind of like a gentle workout, or if it's a deep stretch on days that I really need a good stretch, I've actually already listed down all the links and all the remark. So all I need to do in the morning is really just roll out my yoga mat in my living room and I can just click on a video that suits my need and start doing my yoga. So I will be listing down um, the platform where I watch yoga videos and also the YouTube channel that I always go to in my show notes in case any of you are interested. One thing that I forgot to mention is that I'm also quite gentle on myself on days that I don't get to do things that I want to do. So we are living a life that is full of ups and downs and there are bound to be times when something happened in your life or you are just too busy to have time to work out or to meditate and it is and I want you to know that it is okay to break your streak if you don't get to build a habit so for example last month because I was very stressed with work and I had a workshop to conduct and I still have this podcast that I want to commit to. I actually skipped gym for almost two weeks and for someone who is going to the gym three times a week, two weeks feels a lot but I didn't get angry at myself. I didn't feel guilty. I just know that life happens and it's okay. But the important thing is to make sure that I go back and continue the habit again after I've stopped doing it. Of course, there is going to be some sort of resistance because your body might feel a little bit more sore again if you have been stopping working out in a bit. But you just got to persevere knowing that after suffering for a week or two, your muscle is going to adapt again and it's going to get easy again. Um, I do want to mention that on the note of working out three times a week and working out in my own residence, I am someone who has already invested in personal training and group training a few years prior to this. So I have already learned from expert before on the right form that is needed to do strength training myself. So I felt like that is something that helped If you are someone who is just starting out to work out and you want to use gym equipments and dumbbells, I highly recommend you to actually invest in attending classes or getting personal training first. At least you know that you are doing the right thing. 
to have a more efficient workout routine to see results and also to prevent any accidents of not doing things in the right posture in the right way. So if you are just starting out, I highly recommend you to invest in somebody first, which might be more troublesome for you to build the habit. But trust me, as time goes by, as you have already learned whatever technique it is to that you need, then you can slowly make things easier for you to actually like, you know, just work out by yourself. Another good habit that I was able to build in the last few years is to get more than seven hours of sleep on average. This is something that I'm very proud of because I find that when I have finally gotten enough sleep every day, my brain actually functions more optimally. Like I'm able to think better when it comes to my work and I'm actually just more efficient in doing things. So things that, you know, could have taken me an hour to do on days that I'm sleep deprived, it actually takes me just half an hour to complete my work. So I highly encourage you to build a a routine of getting seven hours of sleep on average and how I'm able to force myself to get used to sleeping this much because I used to always feel like 24 hours in a day it's not enough and I always want to maximize my time as much as possible I need to force myself to sleep so much and what I'm able to do is to actually establish a bedtime routine at night so I am using iPhone and there is a lot of features that I'm able to use um, to help me to build this habit If you are using Android or Huawei, I'm pretty sure you have similar features, but they might just be using different terms on it. So number one, the first thing that I've done is to actually set a bedtime for myself. And that would be from 11 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. Like that is my ideal sleeping window. And on your iPhone, under the sleep section in the health app, you can actually set that. What I've done is also to create a focus mode that is called sleep or bedtime. And an hour before 11 p.m., which is the start of my sleeping window, my phone would automatically turn on the sleep time focus mode. And that is pretty much like 10 p.m., right? And at that point, when it's in sleep mode, I would not get any WhatsApp notification anymore. The page where I listed down all the apps where my social media apps are, it's all hidden. So I'm actually not able to see my social media apps to make it so easy for me to tap on it. And my, you know, my iPhone would go into dark mode. And it's, it just makes it a lot less distraction for me to just focus on wind down. And what I would do at that point is then to actually go and shower and, you know, carry out my nighttime skincare routine. And at this time, I would also turn off the sitting light in my room and just turn on the bedside lamp. So it's kind of like a very dark and cozy mode in order for me to signal my body to tell my circadian cycle that it's time to wind down and to get my brain waves to slow down. And this is probably the time that I would start nagging Kevin to come and cuddle with me in bed and we would talk about our day. Or on some days, if he's busy, I'll probably just start lying on the bed and start reading. So I try to avoid scrolling on social media before going to bed. And it's not always successful. There are going to be days where I'm just like, you know, having my revenge bedtime routine. But I try to avoid doing it by having a fiction book that I am always reading before my bedtime. I like to read fiction instead of non-fiction because I always think of reading before I go to bed as like a bedtime story to help myself to get into an imaginative mindset and to just wind down and go to bed. So recently, I've also started a routine that after I stop reading and turn off the light and when I'm really lying in my bed going to sleep, I would then ask myself, what are the three things that I am grateful for today? So this is a new habit that I'm building and I'm really loving it. I feel like it helps me to end my day in a positive note to be filled with gratitude and to really raise my frequency while doing so. Now I am going into removing bad habits. 
So the logic is pretty simple. In order for you to make good habits, you want to make these good habits as easy as possible for you to practice them. And in order for you to remove a bad habit is to make this habit as terrible it is for you to actually do that stuff. So let's just give you an example. One of the habits that I was trying to reduce or to remove is to actually scroll less on social media on my mobile phone. I just felt like I was spending way too much time in my life scrolling on my digital screen. Like I would scroll on social media first thing in the morning or during my work breaks or before I go to bed. So I really wanted to to reduce the bad habit of scrolling too much on my phone. I've just shared with you guys that after my phone turns into sleep mode on my phone, I don't get notification and it's hard for me to find the social media app because that page is hidden. And same thing for my morning routine. So what I've done to avoid scrolling on social media the first thing in the morning is that I have automated my phone using shortcut so that after my morning alarm gets turned off, my iPhone would automatically turn on my Garmin app instead. That is the app that is synced to my smartwatch where I'm able to study how many hours of sleep I've gotten and what is the quality of my sleep. So I try to do that to distract myself from the, what's the word, the temp from the temptation to actually open up social media and start scrolling. So I make it a habit to like, you know, the first thing I'm wanting, I look at the number of hours and quality that I sleep first. And then from there on, I would kind of remind myself that, okay, no scrolling on my phone. I'm going to brush my teeth, drink my water, and I'm going to start meditating. So that has helped me to avoid scrolling on social media first thing in the morning. And during work, what was able to help me to avoid scrolling on social media, it's really like out of sight, out of mind. So what I would do is when I want to get into focus work, I literally put my phone inside a drawer where I cannot see it at all. And what I would do is I would use the Pomodoro method to get into focus mode. I would set a timer for 25 minutes for me to do focus work and I would have five minutes break. And this is the time when I can actually scroll on social media for a little bit or go to the washroom. And after the five minutes end, phone is back into the drawer again and I am back to work again. So that was how I was able to really significantly reduce my screen time. And I find that even though I'm a content creator and I need to spend a significant amount on social media, I've been able to spend more time on the app as a creator, like a producer of content, instead of just a consumer. And I find that it's been a very good habit for me. Okay, I've realized that I've been mentioning quite a bit about like iPhone shortcuts and stuff like that. And I'm not too sure if without sharing my screen with you, if it's easy for you to get what I'm saying. But if you are interested to learn more about how I turn on my iPhone settings or how I optimize my mobile phone pretty much to improve my productivity level, if you are interested to learn more about it, can you vote on my Spotify podcast where there's a poll for you to let me know if you would love for me to actually create a video, maybe a YouTube video, maybe a reel, I'll decide later more so about this topic. If you would like to learn like screen by screen, step by step, how to turn on the setting or how I use digital solutions to increase my productivity, let me know, okay? All right, the next thing, the next bad habit that I was able to kind of improve is that I used to procrastinate a lot on tasks that I just don't like to do tasks like doing the dishes or folding the clothes, like I would procrastinate as much as possible with the dirty dishes in the sink or a pile of clean laundry that I just didn't want to fold for as long as possible. But now I'm able to kind of fight with them and to actually start doing them. And what I practice is the two minutes rule. So it basically says that if a task can be done within two minutes, just do it now instead of saving it for 
later. On days that like, you know, my cup has been on my table for pretty long and I'm so lazy looking at it, I'll be like, you know what? It's only going to take less than two minutes. I'm just going to do it now. There are many tasks that are just two minutes or even five minutes and it will be enough for you to do it. So just remind yourself that even though I don't like it, it's going to take a short time. So might as well just do it now. Another thing that has helped me to kind of do things that I find it so much resistance to do, like folding my laundry, is to tie this habit with something else that I actually enjoy doing. So for example, for folding laundry, I've built a habit of folding my clothes while watching a Netflix show. So I actually sometimes look forward to folding my laundry because then it's an excuse for me to watch a show while folding my clothes while being productive and I get to do that without guilt. So that has also kind of helped me when it comes to procrastinating on tasks that I just didn't want to do. And speaking of Netflix, I did find that in the past years, I've been spending a little bit too much time on Netflix. For me to remove this habit, what I've done is I kind of just replaced the habit of watching Netflix with reading a book. So I remember last year was the year that I actually start like, you know, sometimes whenever I find that I'm watching too much Netflix, instead of opening up Netflix, I would open the iBook app on my iPhone or my iPad. And I would just start reading the ebooks that I've already downloaded. And that was how I was able to actually unconsciously read 18 books last year, which was, I feel like it's something that I was very surprised about because prior to that, I was one of those person that always kind of set a goal to read at least one book every single month. And that would be like 12 books a year. And last year, when I didn't even plan it, I just replaced my bad habit with a better habit. I was able to read 18 books in a year. And this year, even though I've been pretty busy and I didn't even set a goal to read like 12 books in a year, I've already read 11 books this year because I've been building this habit of reading before I go to bed instead of scrolling social media or reading instead of watching Netflix. And that has helped me to make better use of my time. So as you can see, I've applied many of these small principles that I've learned through this book, and that has helped me to build pretty good habit in the last 24 months in my life. And they are not just personal habits, but also in terms of my work and my content creation habits as well. I have already built systems in place that has made it a lot easier for me to show up with focus when it comes to my work. So every day when I get to my office, I have already made it a routine for me to, after making my cup of coffee, I would check my to-do list of the day, I would find out what is my focus, and I would put my phone in my drawer and I start getting into focus mode. So I'm actually quite productive or like efficient with my time in that sense. And when it comes to creating this weekly podcast as well, I've been able to break down each episode's content creation process into smaller steps and it's just make it easier for me to show up because there is less resistance when you know what you need to do. The same principles and system are the same things that help me to actually start posting three to four contents on my Instagram and on my TikTok. And, you know, I am quite proud that just by actually applying something that I've learned in a book. Because we all know there are millions of books out there that can teach you many things. But if you've learned about it, but if you don't apply any single thing that you learned, nothing in your life is going to change. So that is what I am trying to tell you here today is that if you actually build good habits, your life can change, but it's only if you are willing to apply what you learn and to actually make a change in your life. So I guess I want to wrap up this podcast by reminding you to go back to the intention that you have set for the year of 2024. Envision the person that you want to become and ask yourself, what kind of habits does your ideal and your dream selves have? 
Will she be spending her days scrolling on her phone mindlessly and like spend hours watching Netflix and eating unhealthy snacks all day? Or is she someone who enjoys doing these things every once in a while but would actually take care of her health and go to the gym and have enough sleep and take healthy food? Or read books or consume contents that would actually help her to grow personally and professionally? That's a question that only you can decide. And as you envision this person, reverse engineer and ask yourself, what habits would you need to cultivate today and start building today to become that person that you've always dreamed of becoming? Start doing this today, okay? The key word is today. Because if you are able to start building these habits today, By the time that New Year comes, which is in over a month from now, you would have already been ahead of everyone who would then only have started to set their New Year's resolution. Then you can actually focus on using the New Year's momentum and motivation to just catapult on the foundation that you have already built this year. Habits take time and patience to build. So the sooner you start, the sooner you can build the endurance to keep on going. I really hope that this episode inspires you to start building good habits to become the person that you have always wanted to become. And I'm honestly really looking forward to hear an update from you after you have successfully established a habit that you want to have. If you really enjoyed it, be sure to give it a five-star rating on Spotify or give it a thumbs up on YouTube. And if you've not already followed or subscribed to my channel, be sure to do so. I would really appreciate it. Don't forget to vote and tell me if you would like for me to share more tutorials about how I use digital tools to improve my quality of life. And that is pretty much everything that I have for you right now. I would see you in my next episode. Goodbye.